Hey guys, it's Michael here and in this video we are going to debunk some stock market myths and look at the best ways to prepare for a stock market crash with our best and most trustworthy friend, data. So if we go ahead and look at the financial markets today and the news surrounding it, you could definitely say it's a turbulent time with a lot of unknowns going on. There's talks of hyperinflation, the ongoing Evergrande debt crisis, trade wars between the West and the East, and then there's people like Robert Kiyosaki, the author of Rich Dad Poor Dad, saying that the biggest crash in world history will hit in October, which is this month. And whilst nobody knows for certain when a market crash will occur, when you receive messages like this, it really makes you wonder if there is a bubble or if there is a crash coming. And I swear this was actually a real message from my mum, and I can say that she didn't end up buying any Bitcoin in the end. And to be fully transparent, I don't have any crypto interest at this point in time. And I know this message isn't about the stock market specifically, but the point I just wanted to make is that messages like these are usually pretty good indicators that something might be a bit overcooked and that you should probably prepare yourself for any potential market crashes. And I would love to hear from you guys in the comments if you have received any messages like this from relatives or acquaintances that showed something might be in a bubble. But in this video, I don't want to spend too much time focusing on whether the stock market's going to crash this month or next month or next year, as the reality is nobody knows exactly when, but more importantly, in the long run, it really doesn't matter. And let me show you what I mean here. But before I do, I would really appreciate it if you could smash the like button down below. It will only take a second and it really does help me gauge the type of videos that I should be creating more of. Now, I receive comments almost every day asking if it is the right time to invest given that the market is at an all-time high, and apologies that I don't get to answering all of them, but it is a valid concern, especially if you are starting out. So I want to show you guys and dive right in and analyze the data across three different scenarios to see how we'd fare trying to time the market. First, if we are the worst market timers in existence and we literally buy it at the all-time high just before a crash every time. Second, if we are omniscient and all-seeing and are able to predict every single market bottom and invest right at that time. And then third, I want to show you guys what might happen if we just consistently invest over time, whether we're at all-time highs or crashing or in the middle of a stock market crash. So for each of these scenarios, what we're going to do is the baseline is assume that you're able to save $200 a month for 40 years to use for investing into the S&P 500, which would be a total of $96,000 invested over the 40 years. And a shout out and full credit to the Reddit user Jer Schneed, I probably butchered that name, who was the person who crunched all the numbers for this analysis. Now, first up, imagine you are Timmy, the unluckiest investor on earth. You've saved $200 a month getting 3% interest for eight years, watching the stock market skyrocket during the 1980s, only to finally decide to invest your money at the absolute market peak in 1987, right before Black Monday and the subsequent 33% crash. But the positive thing for Timmy is that he never sold and instead started saving his cash again, only to do the same the next three market peaks, each time investing the full amount of the saved cash, only to watch the market crash immediately the day after. Most recently, he put all his money in the day before the 2007 global financial crisis. And he's been saving cash ever since, waiting for the next market team to literally buy at the highest point. He's really the most terrible market timer ever. However, and this is where it's actually pretty cool and interesting, even with this truly terrible market timing, Timmy didn't even end up doing that badly in the end. His $96,000 that he saved and invested over the 40 years is now worth over $663,000. Even though he invested at every single market peak just before a crash over the past 40 years, the result is thanks to the power of buying and holding. The main thing there being holding. Since he never sold out of the market, his investment always recovered over the long run and flourished as the market inevitably recovers, surpassing his original terrible entry points. This just goes to show that buying high can still turn out okay as long as you don't sell. I repeat, the main thing here is that you must hold. All right, now for this next example, imagine you are the complete opposite to Timmy and you're the world's best market timer 
and only ever buy stocks at the absolute bottom of a recent market crash. Welcome to the world of Bailey. So Bailey also saved her money in a savings account earning 3% interest, but she was able to correctly predict the exact bottom of each of the four crashes and invested all of her saved cash on those days. Once invested, she also held her index fund while saving up for the next market crash. And it can't be overstated how hard it is to predict the bottom of a market. In 1990, with war breaking out in the Middle East, Bailey decided to dump all her cash in when the market was only down 19%. But in 2007, the market dropped 19% and she didn't jump in until it fell all the way down to a 56% drop. Again, perfectly predicting the moment it had no more to fall and dumped all of her cash in just before the recovery. So Bailey was truly a brilliant market timer and for this impossibly perfect market timing, she was rewarded. Her $96,000 of savings had grown to over $956,000 in that same 40 year period. So it's certainly an improvement but interesting to note that when comparing the absolute worst market timing versus the absolute best, the difference was only a 44% gain in the end. Both Bailey and Timmy had the vast majority of their growth thanks to buying and holding a low cost index fund. Again, the most important thing is that they both did not panic sell and held over a long period of time. Now, I know you subscribers who've watched all of my videos where I talk about the benefits of consistent long-term investing. I know you guys aren't like Timmy and Bailey. You don't try to buy the dip or watch stock prices or listen to analysts saying that the market is about to crash. Well, for all of you slow and steady subscribers, imagine that in 1979, the same starting point as both Bailey and Timmy, all you did was set up a $200 per month auto investment in an S&P 500 index fund. Each month, your account would automatically invest $200 more into that index fund at whatever the current price happened to be. This meant that you invested at every market peak and every market bottom and everything in between. Your money never sat in a savings account earning only 3% interest. Well, after the 40 years when you finally decided to have a look at your portfolio value, all of you subscribers would be pleasantly surprised with what you found. The slow and steady approach had grown your nest egg to $1.3 million. This huge gain, even though you didn't have Bailey's impossibly perfect ability to know the bottom of the market, the slow and steady dollar cost averaging strategy beat Bailey by more than $400,000 in returns over the long run. So if you aren't subscribing yet, what are you waiting for? And hit the subscribe button down below. And just as a point of reference, if you left your money in that savings account across the 40 years, you would have only ended up with $185,000. So far worse than everybody else. So what should you take away from this? Well, if you're worried about the market being at an all time high, which it definitely could be, remember that even if you only buy at the all time highs every single time, right before the crashes, you'll still be substantially better off than if you left your money on the sidelines in a standard savings account. As long as you hold. Remember, the key here is buy and hold. But the best thing to do by far is to consistently add to your investments over time at a regular pace, regardless of the current price, as this will end up performing better than even the world's best market timer. The simplest way to do this will be through using an automated investing tool. Personally, I use Perla as it's really simple and has some great features to help make long-term investing really easy. If you want to know a bit more about Perla, be sure to check out my full review, or if you want to sign up, use my link below for a free trade. So now that you know that timing the market over the long run isn't actually a big deal, and you don't really get much out of it if you just consistently invest, the next thing you should do to prepare yourself for a potential stock market crash is to evaluate your current risk level. And what I mean by this is that you should only ever invest what you can afford to lose, as with any investment, there is always the possibility it goes to zero. I will say though, if you're investing in a broad market-based ETF, this chance in all likelihood is very close to zero of it going to zero. And if we ever see the S&P 500, for example, go to zero, well, we've probably got some really big problems going on in the world, much bigger than our own stock portfolio. I'm talking about like World War III breaking out, nobody valuing the dollar anymore, riots and just chaos everywhere. So I think it's a pretty low chance, but remember it is still possible. But what is definitely likely, and of course the point of this video, 
are various stock market crashes over the term of your investing. And these could range anywhere from 10% drops to well over 50%. And this is why I usually say that any investments you make into the stock market should only be with money that you probably won't need to access for at least 10 years. And let me explain why with some really cool data points. There's been around 12 bear markets between World War II and 2007, with an average decline of 32.5% in each bear market. And we consider the stock market in a bear market whenever there's been a drop of more than 20% off the 52 week high. So one of the longest market crashes was in October 2007, where we saw the market decline for almost two years until March 2009. The market dropped 56% and then took more than four years to recover, only to reach its previous high again. And this is why I think you should only be investing with money you won't need for at least 10 years, as it could potentially take six to seven years for you to get back to a break even in a worst case scenario of investing right before a long market crash. And then you would probably wanna stay in the market at least a little bit longer to get a return back rather than only get back to even. But this is where you need to be really patient and remember, always buy and hold as seven years or 10 years is a super long time to wait and it's very easy to be scared and just panic sell. And it's important to note though that on average, bear markets don't really last that long and have only lasted around 14 and a half months and usually take around two years to recover. So it's often only around three years to get back to break even if you invest just before a market crash. And if you're somebody obsessed with numbers like me and need a bit more convincing, well, another really, really interesting data point I found is the number of stock market up days versus the number of down days. In the 20 years between 1996 and 2016, there was a total of 5,035 trading days. And in 2,683 days of those, the S&P 500 had a positive trading day as in it closed higher than it did the trading day prior. That means that the percentage of stock market up days from 1996 to 2016 was 53.29% and the percentage of stock market down days was 46.71%, which looks really great, but we need to make sure that we also look at the returns as it doesn't matter if you win more often, if your losses are way bigger than your wins. Thankfully, the total return percentage came out to be 2200% on the up days and minus 2043% on the down days. This worked out to be an average daily gain of 0.82% on the up days and an average daily loss of minus 0.87% on the down days. Which finally, when you crank out the numbers again, works out to be an average return over the 20 years of 7.88% per annum, which is pretty in line with the long-term returns of the market. So whilst the odds of having a positive versus a negative return on any given day are only slightly better than a coin flip, over the long run, this small edge will compound into massive returns. It's the same concept of being the house at the casino, where in most games, the house will only have a very, very small edge of just over 50%. But because of the law of large numbers, it guarantees stable long-term results for the averages of random events. For example, while a casino may lose money in a single spin of the roulette wheel, its earnings will tend towards a predictable percentage over a large number of spins, which spawns the saying, the house always wins. So this is why I like to think of our investing over the long run in the same way. On any given day, you might be up, you might be down, but there is slightly more positive up days in the end over the long run, which means over that long run, you will have a positive return. Which kind of brings us to the point again where it doesn't make sense to try and time the market if you're in it for the long run. So for this next point on how to prepare for a market crash, well, I think it's super important to always have an emergency fund set aside. For those of you who don't know what an emergency fund is, it's really just the money you set aside to only be used in case of, you guessed it, an emergency, where you have no other place to turn. And ideally, the size of this emergency fund should be equivalent to three to six months worth of your living expenses and kept easily accessible for obviously, again, emergencies. The great thing about having this type of emergency fund means that you're not gonna have to rely on credit cards to pay your way through any unexpected events. You won't have to sell your stocks or other investments to pay for it at a time when they've obviously declined in value and it's not a great time to sell. And you won't have to take on any high interest rate debt anytime something happens. 
So in a way, having this money sitting on the sidelines could end up saving you a lot of money and it basically acts as an insurance policy for anything to happen. So if you don't already have an emergency fund, then this is definitely something I would start preparing before a market crash. So I know you're probably thinking to yourself, but Michael, I'd rather just invest the money and instead get a much higher than a 2% return in the stock market. As we saw in the example earlier, that you could just go ahead and do that. And certainly you could go and do this, but my rationale is that typically emergencies happen on short notice when you most need the money. And if a stock market crash happens, by the time you need your money, your investments might have declined 20% in value, which at that point, I have a feeling you would have just wished you had have kept your money in a savings account instead. Now I've watched a lot of videos and read a lot of posts and articles about tips for if the stock market is gonna crash. And a lot of people are recommending that you bolster up your emergency fund if you think the stock market is due for a crash so that you'll have extra funds to invest if it does crash. Personally, I think this is pretty counterintuitive and goes against a long-term investing mindset. As we've already established that it's basically impossible to predict a market crash, so you might have this extra money sitting on the sidelines getting almost no return for what could be a really, really long time. And this would effectively turn you into a market timer when you could have just been investing this extra money consistently over time. I prefer to just keep six months of living expenses in a savings account and I don't change this value even if I think a stock market crash is imminent. Because really, even though I think it might happen, in the end, I have no idea and it is again, super, super hard to try and time the market. The next most important thing I would be doing to prepare for a stock market crash is be looking at my investment portfolio and seeing if I'm well diversified. Sometimes the market crash might only affect a certain area of the market or have a larger effect in a particular industry or sector. And this effect is only magnified if you're invested in individual companies. To counteract this, I would ensure that your investment portfolio is well diversified across both industries and countries. And this could be as simple as using a single globally diversified ETF like VDHG or DHHF or a combination of ETFs to achieve a similar result. Now imagine we've done everything on this list and we're really prepared for a stock market crash. And then we finally find ourselves right in the middle of one, like the most recent COVID stock market crash. So what should we do now? This is where it's extremely important. We go back to the example I went through at the beginning of the video with Timmy, Bailey and you subscribers. This is where we'll make our long-term returns and where we need to keep doing as we have been continuing to invest regularly with our committed level of regular investing amounts. And believe me, I know it's tempting to try and increase the amount we normally invest with if we find ourselves in a market crash, but the truth is we really don't know where the true bottom is. So even if we found ourselves in a bear market, we might still have a ways to go to get to that true bottom. And on the flip side, it's also very tempting to sell and minimize your losses but this is again, probably the worst thing you could possibly do. As again, you never know when the bottom is and how will you decide when to buy back into the market. Remember the examples from earlier where even the best market timing was outperformed by regular automated investing. And I've heard countless anecdotes from people around me who switched their super to cash during the start of COVID, most of which weren't able to predict the swift recovery and lost a lot of their retirement savings because of this decision. So please just remember to buy and hold. The best thing you could do during a stock market crash is to continue investing how you have been and remember the law of large numbers where over the long run, you like the casino will always come out on top. So with that said guys, thanks so much for watching the video. As always, please smash the like button down below, subscribe and hit the bell if you haven't already and leave a comment if you have any questions. I do try and get to all of them. Have a great one and I'll catch you in the next video.